need you to come to, to our rescue. rescue. We need you to come to our rescue, Lord. Storms, the storms of life have torn our hearts into two. Lord, we need you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we need you. Just lift your hands up. Just lift your hands up. We need him. I don't know about you, but many hearts are torn into two. Financially, hunger. Many hearts are torn into two psychologically, emotionally. Yes, we need him to come and fill us. Fill the space in our hearts. Fill the void of leadership in our nation. Fill the void of leadership in the various states. Leadership vacuum is there. We need God to step in and to fill up the void of leadership. To fill up the emptiness that men and women are experiencing. Lord, we need you to fill up this space. We need you to fill up this space. Show us your face, oh Lord. Just show us your face. Lord, show me your face. Show me your mercy. Fill up the void in my life. Nigeria needs you right now. We need you, Lord, more than ever before. We need you more than ever before. Lord, we need you more than ever before. The government needs you more than ever before. Our nation needs you more than ever before. The judiciary needs you more than ever before. The executive needs you more than ever before. The legislature needs you more than ever before. The citizens of Nigeria, we need you more than ever before. Show us your face, Lord. Show us your face. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Show us your face. And fill up the void and emptiness of our hearts. Restore hope to yours. Restore hope to us. And give us something tangible to hold on to. Thank you, Father. Your hope does not make ashamed. Fill up the void and emptiness of our hearts. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. In the name of Jesus. I say, in Jesus' name, we have worshipped. May it be unto you as your heart has desired this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. And the people of God say, Let's give it up to the Lord. God bless you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What a very prophetic song. What a prophetic song that the Lord has brought to us. I pray that you will realize that you ought to pray that prayer by the hour, by the minute. The world needs God, but Nigeria within the world needs God more than ever before. The storms of life have torn our hearts into two. We need God to rescue us. How can a nation that is blessed with, there is no state in Nigeria that is not blessed with abundance of mineral resources. Uranium, we have it. Lithium, All the rich minerals of the world. Lithium is now gold. Much more than gold. We have it in Nigeria. That's what's powering all your iPhones, all the batteries and all what have you. It's being mined in Nigeria illegally. We are so fixated on oil, 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 oil. Neglecting the so many other abundance of God that he has put under the belly of our nation. There is a leadership vacuum that God needs to feel. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have an amen? amen? We started burdened by the things and happenings in our nation last Thursday. I started a new series that we run on Thursdays for the next couple of weeks or months. The God Factor. 
in leadership. The God factor. That's the space that is missing. No matter how skillful you are, no matter how competent you are on the outside, if the God factor is missing, every of those competence will amount to nothing. You will do all you can do. It will be a lot of You'll be as if, what are we even doing? Because the God factor is missing. Psalm 22 verse 28 is the governor of all the nations of the earth. And if you don't invite him to come and rule and reign, you are wasting your time. You can consult all the marabouts. You can consult all the babalawos. You can bury people. You can do all manners of stuff. It will amount to nothing. Nigeria is not going to get it right until a man that is ready to submit to the Lord and allow God to rule and reign gets there. There's nothing we can do. Can I have an amen? The kingdom is the Lord's. He rules over the nations. The translation says he's the governor of all the nations of the earth. Anybody who is ruling must hold on to him to give him the tools that he needs to be able to succeed as a leader. Today, South Korea is one of the top most industrialized worlds. It just started in the 70s. In the 70s. How many years ago? Less than 50? About 50 years ago. They locked up the whole place. And that's the role of the church. Paul Young Cho. The full gospel Yoido church. That's what the gospel did to open up and liberate South Korea. It's one of the fastest growing industrialized nations in the world today. They've given you Hyundai. They've given you Kia. They've given you Samsung. LG. Hallelujah. It's the gospel that bathed it. So if the God factor is missing in our leadership, that's why that song touched me there and gripped my heart. God needs to fill this leadership vacuum in our nation. In the name of Jesus. It's not about your competence. It's not about your experience. We did it in Lagos. So what? It's Lagos, Nigeria. It's not about that. It's about inviting God to come and rule and reign. Yielding yourself and say, Lord, rule through me. Lead your people through me. Solomon said, Lord, I want nothing. God gave him an open check. First Kings chapter 3. He says, just give me the wisdom and the understanding heart. Who is able to lead this your people? This your great people? Who? I'm your child. I'm just a child. And God says, because you have asked for this thing, because God is the author of leadership, is the ultimate authentic leader. Hallelujah. If you are leading and you are not leading right in your, your office, you need to invite God there. You are God's regent. You must allow him to rule, to lead through you. You must collect the gift of leadership from him. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Let's give it up to the Lord one more time. Because we have invited him. The prayers this morning started by God. Remove everyone that will not yield to your leadership. That's where we started from. And then the choir has come to give us the prophetic insight. To fill that void. Fill that space. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Let me pump a, give a high five to your neighbor. Pump a hand, shake a neck. Don't break it. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Let me tell him how you're welcome this morning. We are welcoming Jesus. Will you allow God to fill up the space in your life? Let me ask him or her. Hallelujah. Allow God. Tell him, allow God. Allow God. Allow God to fill up the space. To fill up the space. To fill up the space. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, you may be seated in his presence. Shout hallelujah. 
Wow, what a joy, what a joy to be energized by that very powerful prophetic song. Glory to God. This morning, by the grace of God, we are continuing in the part two of our series, The Four Dimensions of Growth. The main theme that we've been looking at is entering into the fullness of our consolidation, part five. And now we are examining the second dimension, the four dimensions of growth. And by the grace of God, we'll be looking at the second dimension this morning. Our text is from Zechariah chapter eight, verses 20 to 23. Zechariah chapter eight, verses 20 to 23, ESV. Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. I thought I would have a living amen. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Let me ask your neighbor, are you going? Are you coming? Hallelujah. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Hallelujah. We have heard that God is with you. When God turned the captivity of the Jews during the time of Esther and Mordecai, in Esther chapter 8, give me verse 17, everybody wanted to become a Jew. Hallelujah. And in every province and in every city, wherever the king's command and his edit reached, there was gladness among there was gladness and joy among the Jews. A feast and a holiday. Look at the next phrase. Can we read together? And many from the peoples of the country declared themselves for fear of the Jews had. Hallelujah. Many from the peoples of the country, they declared themselves Jews. They said we are not Jews. The days are coming when the Nigerian passport will be the most treasured in the name of Jesus. We'll be a pariah nation today, but when God steps in and begins to rule and reign, can I have an amen? Do you believe it? You have heard of Jackpa. You know Jackpa that is already taking place. Jackpa. Jackpa. They're already coming. There are folks, foreigners, who are second or third generation in our country. Do you know that? Their father was born here. They themselves were born here. Foreigners who have now naturalized as Nigerians. Can I have an amen? They have the upper hand everywhere. There is nowhere they cannot enter. If they want to enter Asso Rock today, just 24 hours they will visit the president. But the Lord will reverse our fortune in the name of Jesus. The first dimension that we looked at from verse 20, we said is the dimension of random growth. It shall come to pass that people shall come and the inhabitants of many cities. People shall yet come even the inhabitants of many cities. 
because of our precious time, we are not able to reload it this morning because of the dimension God has led us as through the precious voices. But suffice it to say that that first dimension of random growth guarantees universal access to our church and to your business and to your life endeavors. Because it says, peoples shall yet come. And that means peoples from every sphere of influence, peoples of all nationalities, peoples of all tribes, young men, old men, women, hallelujah. Peoples shall patronize you in the name of Jesus. Our church will be accessible to all men and women, young and old, boys and girls, to all nations, the Yoruba nation, the Jordan nation, name it, all the nations of the earth, and to all professions, doctors, nurses, engineers, hairdressers, barbers, tailors, fashionistas, name it, hallelujah, because they constitute the peoples. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All nations, that's why we are precious people's assembly for all, for all nations. Because nations, from all the nations of the earth, they will be coming in the name of Jesus. The world is your parish and your marketplace. Stop limiting yourself. Just like yourself. The world is our parish and our marketplace. That was a covenant that the gospel delivered to us even through Abraham. The Bible says God reckoning that this was what he wanted to do. First preached the gospel to Abraham our father. And what was that gospel? In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The world is your parish. Let me tell your neighbor, the world is your parish. You are not a local champion. You are not a local doctor. You are not a local engineer. You are not a local baker. You are not a lo local barber. Let me ask him, what is your profession? I'm prophesying to his life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The world is your parish. It's your marketplace. That's the covenant that we have with God. Can I have an amen? And the earlier you understand this principle and this covenant that God has wrought for us through Christ Jesus, the easier it becomes for you. Hallelujah. And we did say in concluding that random growth, that you must position yourself on the world stage. And you can do so through what? Through your phone. Through the gateway of the internet, you can be on the world. Playing on the highways of the world. No matter what it is you are doing. You are just a one-man squad. Register a page. Open a Facebook page. And you get onto the highways of the world. May not be more than one or two pages. Register your presence there. Can I have an amen? Because faith without works is, is dead. Number two. Let's quickly go to the second dimension. We have preached two series of that random growth. We reloaded it. I counsel you to visit our YouTube channel to ensure that you get the fullness out of that message. The second dimension of growth we see in verse 21. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. For continuity, we'll read it too. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. Verse 21. The inhabitants of one city among those who have come shall go to another saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Hallelujah. I call this the recurrent dimension of growth. The first is random. The second dimension I call the recurrent dimension of growth. Recurrent dimension. R E C U W R E N T. Hallelujah. What does recurrent mean? 
According to the Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, it defines recurrence as an adjective of the word recall, which means to return. Literally, it means to run back. So recurrent means running or turning back in a direction that is opposite to a former course. Recurrent means returning or happening time after time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. We see that peoples shall yet come, the inhabitants of many cities, and out of those, it says in verse 21, the inhabitant of one of the cities shall go to another saying, you know what, haven't you heard? Let's go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Hallelujah. I see those who have showed up in our midst randomly in the past returning again and again and again. I see, I see them running back again and again and again in the name of Jesus. Recurrent growth. They will say to one another, let's go at once. Hallelujah. Some synonyms of the word recurrent. It means repeat. It means repeated. So when we are talking of this second dimension, we are talking of repeated growth. We are talking of frequent growth. Another synonym of that word recurrent means frequent. And another synonym yet means continuing growth. Your growth will be continuing. I said you will enjoy repeat growth. In the name of Jesus. When men and women visit us from every city and they have tasted of the goodness of the Lord, they will be the one advertising our church. Somebody says, well, pastor, you know, we always have many people visiting us, but some of them we don't see come back. We don't know what is wrong. There is nothing wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is nothing wrong. The church is the ground and pillar of truth. It's an open house. Shout hallelujah. But according to the prophetic word of the Lord, the Lord is activating not just random growth, but it's also activating recurrent growth. I said they will come back again. They will return again and again and again in the name of Jesus. They will be the one advertising the inhabitants of one city shall go to say, let us go at once. They've come from their various cities. And then they say, you know what? They'll go knocking on the doors of other cities. Say, let us go at once. Shout hallelujah. For those of you who are businessmen, what do you do with your customers that you have that are already existing? Amen? What do you do with them? You maintain them. Amen? When you have a customer that you have locked down, do you need to bother about that customer again? Because they'll keep coming. They'll keep coming. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. If you are not yet enjoying that dimension, I'm saying to you that it's your season to enjoy recurrent growth. In the name of Jesus, your customers will go to be the one advertising your products. They will knock on the door of their friends and say, come, let us go to Drakeford. They will knock on the door of their homes and say, come, let us go to the pump house. They will be the one advertising your business in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What you need is to enter into the fullness of this dimension. Once you have done a project, that project must speak for you. And those your customers will be the ones advertising you. That is what this dimension is talking about. Recurrent growth. They will become your advertising agents. And that's what church ought to be. That when a life is transformed, that life becomes the testimonial. In John chapter 4, what happened to the woman by the well? 
The woman by the well of Samaria, she went knocking on the doors of all her previous customers. The first husband, the second husband, come and see. I have seen a man who turned my life around. Hallelujah. The Bible says she went and ministered in how many cities? Ten cities. The woman left her water jar, John 4, 28, and went away into town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? It's recurrent growth. She went to all the cities, first to her customers, all the men that have patronized her. And you know her pedigree. Shout hallelujah. You know her pedigree. She has had how many husbands? Five. And then the one she's with is the sixth one. She first went to convert those ones. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. You are entering into the dimension of recurrent growth where you will not need to struggle. You will enjoy repeat growth. You will enjoy frequent growth in the name of Jesus. That is the dimension God is taking us into. It's not going to be based on your adverts. It's not going to be based on you didn't advertise. It's not going to be based on the fact that, you know, we are not visible. What happened to John the Baptist? Where was his ministry? In the wilderness. And yet, men were drawn there. In their droves. We must stop using worldly tactics. Even to do business, or to do ministry. Even your business. You must pattern it after the pattern of the kingdom. Can I have an amen? I'm not saying stop advertising. But it's an advertisement that God is able to do for you. That is beyond all the physical ones you can do for yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2. And many peoples shall come and say, Come! Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. They have tasted that and seen that the Lord is good. And then they will become your advert agents. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Listen and write this down. This recurrent dimension is therefore a willingly unsolicited, self-motivated, willingly unsolicited, self-motivated, self-propelled, repeat dimension of growth. It's a willingly unsolicited, self-motivated, and self-propelled, repeat dimension of growth. Those who have had contact with us in the past, who have showed up randomly in the past, the Lord will begin to divinely propel them to return and run back to join us in the name of Jesus. That's what this dimension is about. That is what this dimension is about. Hallelujah. Because when it is God's time, there is nothing any man can do to cover your star. Nothing. What are the keys that will power this recurrent growth? What are the keys that will power this recurrent growth? Number one, the recurrent growth will be powered by your actions. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. There is an action that is required of you. You must go after them. Extend the right hand of fellowship to them again. Blast out group text messages to them. Blast out group WhatsApp chats to them. Group emails to them. Have you been thinking of something to buy? You want to buy a particular thing that you have bought before? And suddenly you receive an email or SMS or even a call from the seller. How many of you have experienced that before? And you say, well, you know what? I was just thinking I would call you because we need this good again. Hallelujah. That's recurrent growth. Can I have an amen? 
That man initiated an action that corresponded with your desire. Shout hallelujah. So that is the first thing that will power this. Your action, faith comes, faith without works is what? Is dead. They are musing it in their hearts and God is putting it into their hearts. You have to go back to PPA again. You have to go back to that customer. You have to go back to that place again. But when that their thoughts meet with your positive action, what happens? They jump in. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. I call this the personification of Newton's third law of motion. This action I'm talking of that powers recurrent growth. What is Newton's third law of motion? For every action, there is what? There is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action. Shout hallelujah. Action and reaction forces are equal and opposite forces that act on different objects to result in emotion. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Those of you who ride bicycle or who have ridden a bicycle before, what happens? How does the bicycle move? You exert an action, isn't it? Where is the reaction coming from? Do you know? The ground. You are exerting an action and then the ground will produce an equal and opposite reaction. Equal and opposite. So when you are going this way and the ground is pushing this way, what happens? It results into motion. Shout hallelujah. I call it the personification of Newton's third law of motion. You exert a force that is equal and opposite to the reactionary forces and then it results in emotion. And that's why no matter what God has promised, if you don't do anything about it, it will remain undone. When God gives you a promise, there are actions that are tied to that promise. If you are going to activate that promise, move into action and see God work. Shout hallelujah. And that's why I've taught you over and over, over and over. It's your action that is the spirit that drives your faith. It's your action. No matter what it is, God may have spoken to you. There are corresponding actions that you must take. And not just to fold your hand and say, God has spoken, he will do it. No, it doesn't work that way. Because faith without works is hallelujah. Let me break it down and transform it down to your level. If you want a reaction from someone, what do you do? You act. You initiate an action. You act in love. If you want to get a babe's reaction to notice you, what do you do? You want a babe to notice you. Are you just going, you are just going to be praying? Lord, let her notice me. Let her notice me. Lakura, bakushaka, let her notice me. And then you don't do anything. The man who does not pray and sends her a gift anonymously, say, who sent this? Who did this? She'll be curious to know you have gotten the babe's attention. Shout hallelujah. Because look, for every motion, you need an action to get a reaction. Can I have an amen? You can pray from now till kingdom come. If there is no corresponding action, nothing will happen. The personification of Newton's third law of motion. You want a babe's reaction? Send her a card. Hallelujah. Yours truly received a vision many years ago. And after praying and praying and praying, how do I get this babe's attention? I sent a powerful card. Hallelujah. She said when she saw the card, she was wondering, where is this card from? Who sent this card? <laughs> Hallelujah. Who sent this card? If you want and a reaction, you must put an action forward. True or false? So why do you think you enjoy recurrent growth without an action? Shout hallelujah. You know how to do these things for the mundane things, and yet for the big things, you think God will jump down from heaven. 
has given us these principles of life to be able to apply them to every facet of our lives. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You want, an, you want an, a reaction from anybody, you initiate an action and see whether you will not get a positive and powerful reaction in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 18, 24, the A part, New King James, a man that has friends must do what? Show himself friendly. Glory to God. If you want to maintain friendship, show yourself friendly. Initiate an action. Do something for your friend and see whether you will not get a positive reaction. Shout hallelujah. But you know what? Church folks are so fixated. Not you. I know you have better thoughts. You just keep praying and fasting, praying and fasting, praying and fasting. There is no corresponding action. And faith without works is. May your faith come alive. I said may your faith come alive in the name of Jesus. So the first thing that powers this recurrent growth is your action, your positive action. You want growth in your business. There are things you can do. You have had customer. Customer is low now. Oh, yes, hair cheek. You know what? All your customer base, you must have a database of all your customers, whatever it is you are selling. And periodically, blast out email to them. Blast out chat, even if they don't need it at that time. A friend is talking to them, hey, I need so, so, and so. And they are forgotten you. But when they see your email, your WhatsApp chat or SMS, they say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I know there's one hair chick selling here. Shout hallelujah. Follow me there. Can I have an amen? Yeah. You must maintain a database. Your corresponding action is the first key that will power this recurrent growth. As he has spoken to us about the church, so also he's speaking to you about your ministry, speaking to you about your business, speaking to you about your career. You want a career change, blast out your, your email, your, your CV. Can I have an amen? Yes, you want a career move. Young men come to me, my bankers, they come to me for counseling. Uh, Daddy, how do we uh, want to change? And then they will share some deep things. Strategic move. You are stuck where you are. Seek to move. Even if you are the best, they may not notice you. Initiate a move. Go to a place. If they want you so badly, they will buy you back. It's called strategy. Can I have an amen? You want a job, you have only applied to four places and you say, hey, nobody's calling. How will they call you? Do you know how many hundreds and thousands of people want that same job? And you only sent out emails, sent out CV to only ten. You are not yet serious. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. The first key that will power this recurrent growth is your positive action. Your positive action. Number two. The second thing that will power this recurrent growth, it will be powered by speed. Divine speed. This recurrent growth will be powered by speed, divine speed. Give me verse 21 in Amplified Classic. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to them of another, saying, let us go, how? Speedily to pray and entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek, inquire of, and require to meet our own most essential need, the Lord of hosts, and I will go also. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The current growth will be powered by speed. Divine speed. Sometimes we appear stuck in a particular place over many years. But if you are that person who has been stuck all of this while, I'm here to announce to you that from this day, you are entering into your season of divine speed. You are entering into a season of divine acceleration in the name of Jesus. And you will receive strength for divine speed. I say receive strength for divine speed in the name of Jesus. The reason why people are stuck in a place 
is because they have no motion anymore. They are stuck. They are overwhelmed. Maybe they are overwhelmed. And if you are overwhelmed, then you remain immobile. To be stuck means to be demobilized. And to get you out of that state of demobilization, what do you need? Speed. Shout hallelujah. But not speed that is powered by man, but divine speed. Shout hallelujah. The reason why people get stuck is because of lack of strength or availability of only a small strength which is not enough to push through and overcome. How many of you agree with that? You don't have strength to push through, so you get stuck. Proverbs 24 verse 10. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, it's because what? Your strength is small. But from today, you are receiving the strength of the Lord. I say you are receiving the strength of the Lord for divine speed. And that strength will bath recurrent growth in your life. In the name of Jesus. Go with me to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. Let's illustrate this. Divine speed. To gain speed, you need strength. Not just strength, anyhow strength. That's why it's divine speed. You need strength from the Lord. God the Lord is my strength. May the Lord be your strength. May your strength not be in your degree. May your strength not be in your money. May your strength not be in your connection. I said may your strength not be in your connection. May the Lord God be your strength. In the name of Jesus. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me to tread on my high places to the choir master with stringed instruments. Hallelujah. The Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's feet and he makes me. Check out those words. He makes my feet and he makes me to tread. Hallelujah. Jesus said to Peter, the fishers, he says, follow me and I will do what? And I will make you. You can't make yourself. The strength of men will fail you. Connections of men will fail you. It can work for a while, but it will fail you. Can I have an amen? It's only the lost strength that will not fail. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Give me Amplified Classic, Habakkuk 3.19. The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, and my invisible army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord be your strength. May he be the one you trust in. See the way the prophet Habakkuk personalized it. My personal bravery and my invisible army. He makes my feet like hinds feet and will make me to walk and not to stand still in terror, but to walk. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are stuck, you are terrified, you are in terror. But to walk and make spiritual what? Progress. That is speed. Upon my high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. The high places of trouble, suffering, and responsibility. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will do what? For the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they will comfort you. You may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but I prophesy to you today that you will receive strength. I said you will receive strength and you will gain divine speed to get out of that valley in the name of Jesus. High place of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. You will not collapse under the weight of responsibility. In the name of Jesus. 
is not only trouble or suffering that causes people to get stuck in a place. Many times it's responsibility. You have so much responsibility that you can't even make progress. You can't plan. It's God blessing you. God is blessing you. But the responsibility is so much that you can't even invest. It's not only trouble. It's not only suffering. But the weight of responsibility. And the so much you are earning appears so little. It doesn't even show at times because of responsibility. That is what Nigeria has become. But you will not crumble under the weight of responsibility. I said you will not crumble under the weight of responsibility. You will not collapse under the weight of responsibility. In the name of Jesus. What you need is divine speed to power your recurring growth. Now listen, the high places is a metaphor for two things. The high places is a metaphor for two things. The first one is that it's a place of trouble. A place of suffering or responsibility. There are always heights to climb. Mountains to overcome. Valleys to scale. Rivers to cross. In life, there are always mountains to climb. There are rivers to cross. There are valleys to jump over. And there are mountains to climb. Can I have an amen? So that is the first metaphor of high places. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we see Habakkuk alluding to that here. That for you to do that, you need God to empower you and make your feet like the deer's feet. So that you can climb those mountains, cross those rivers, scale those valleys. And you can be able to overcome. The second thing that high places stand for is a place of increase. A place of abundance and a place of luxury. But if you do not overcome the first, you cannot enter into the second. And the key is speed, given by the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you, you must overcome the first, the troubles, the sufferings, and the responsibilities, the high place of responsibility, the high place of suffering or trouble. To be able to get into the place of high place of increase, abundance, of lo or luxury. And the key to do that is strength. Given, is speed given by the strength of the Lord. And that was why the prophet says, he will make my feet like the deer's feet. He will make me to tread upon my high places. Let's look at the second thing that high place stands for. Increase, abundance, and luxury. Deuteronomy 32, let's read from verse 10 to 14. Deuteronomy 32, verses 10 to 14, Amplified Classic. He found him in a desert land, in the howling void of the wilderness. That stands for you or me. He picked us from the miry clay and set our feet upon the rock to stay. Many of you, including myself, were in the wilderness of life. Lost. Far away from the commonwealth of Zion. We are not a people. Ephesians chapter 2. And yet, he restored us and saved us. And set our feet upon the rock to stand. Can I have an amen? So just as he did for Israel. He found him in a desert land. In the howling void of the wilderness. He kept circling around. Just like many of you were going around rudderless without a direction in life. And he scanned him penetratingly. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. As the pupil of his eyes. He saved you and you became the pupil of his eye. Verse 11. As an eagle stares up her nest. That flutters over her young. He spread abroad his wings. And he took them and bore them in his pinions. Now you are swearing upon the wings of the eagle. Verse 12. So the Lord alone led him. May God alone lead you. I said, may God alone lead you. May money not become your master. May position not become your master. In the name of Jesus. 
So the Lord alone led him and there was no foreign God with him. There was no mixture. You are pure. You are just serving the Lord and nothing more. God was your priority, was your number one, your numero uno. You are committed to him a hundred percent. You are not distracted. Anything that will stand between you and God had better wait. You want to finish with God first before that thing. But some, what has happened now? Many of you, many things are now competing with God in your heart. And yet, when he took you from the desert land, from a howling void, it was not like that. May God restore you back to your first love. May the Lord restore you back to your first love. In the name of Jesus. There was no foreign God. Go back to verse 12. God alone led him. God was number one. Many years ago, as a young engineer, as a young 20 years ago, I'm talking of 20, 21, 22 years ago, in the company that I used to work where I cut my teeth as an engineer, I would follow my boss to the committee of governors, you know, one of our clients, to meet with the committee of governors. They are the most popular bank in Nigeria today. And when we are there, we have to go and defend the projects. You sent your report ahead to the governors and they've read it. And on this particular occasion, we are there waiting. And as a pastor, I was to preach in church, the former church we used to pastor before PPA fan started. And we'll be waiting. Sometimes you can wait from morning till night. They may not even call you. Maybe it's your turn the following day. I've done that once. I've done that twice. And I'll miss service. And I will tell somebody, just stand in for me. On this occasion, I said, you know what? God is number one. I told my boss, sir, I have to be in church. You know I'm a pastor, sir. He said, eh, hey, ah, but you wrote this report. Who will defend it? I said, don't worry, sir. I have to go, sir. Honestly, sir, I have to go. All will be, f all will be well. He said, ah, are you sure? I said, all will be well. I left. Went to church. Around 9 p.m., my boss called me. They did not call us, so you said so. I said, eh, hey, ah, thank God. The following day, we assembled. Shout hallelujah. When you make up your mind and allow God to be number one, he always has his way of setting, sorting you out. But the point is, many of you are not bold enough. Who brought that opportunity? Say, hey, pastor, I have an appointment. I have to go and catch that appointment. May you not be disappointed. I said, may you not be disappointed. If God does not go with you into that appointment, you meet with disappointment. You must get to a point where you prioritize God. I'm a businessman. I hope you know that. And I take my work seriously. But God is number one. And he has never failed me. And but you, go back to verse 12. Yes. It says, God alone led in. There was no foreign God. But many of you grow to a stage where God becomes your per demand. And you feel God will understand. Oh God, you know, this um, early morning prayer, I can't make it, you know. I have this appointment. My estate, I'm the secretary of the association, and we are doing a estate, estate owner's meeting. Hallelujah. And I'm taking some clients. We are going to inspect one site. Inspect what? What are you inspecting? What are you expecting? Hallelujah. Do you understand? When you get to that stage where God becomes number one, it says there was no foreign God in him. You begin to see how God will begin to move in dimensions that surprise you. I've come down from the pulpit and I just got a call. Well, so so and so, are you an engineer? So so and so, yes. Is this your company? I said, yes. Say, well, did you apply? We want you in Yenagoa uh, on Tuesday for, 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 for an interview. I said, what for? A job that I applied for two years earlier. I never knew such a thing would happen in Nigeria. But you know, when God is with you, he will make it happen. Amen. Two years of application that I we have even forgotten. We just saw the advert in the newspaper as a consultant and we put in for it. Two years. I never knew it was still on board. I just came down from a Thursday ministry. And I got a call. Can I have an amen? amen? You must realign yourself and allow God to bring you into proper alignment when you are working with him. He must be number one. 
He must be number one. Glory to God. Let's read on verse 13. He made Israel ride on the what? Remember, he says, he will make my feet like the hind's feet. He made Israel to ride on the high places of the earth. What are the characteristics of that second high places? And he ate what? Increase of the field. He made him to suck honey out of the rock. Oil out of the flinty rock. Hallelujah. It's not done. Butter and cause of the heart. That is yogurt. And milk of the flock. With the fat of the lambs. Rams of the breed of Bashan. And he goats with the finest of what? Of the wheat. And you drank wine of the blood of the grape. Wine is made from grape. Luxury. So we see increase. We see abundance. We see luxury. That is the second metaphor of high places. The first one is suffering, trouble, responsibility. And if you don't scale those, you cannot enter into abundance, increase, and luxury. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And how do you scale it? He says, he will make my feet like the hind's feet. Glory to God. What is it about the deer's feet? How many of you know what a deer is? I could have prepped technology to get me a deer. A deer is that animal with some strong legs and is, is horn like this. Hallelujah. Do you know what he said about the deer's feet? The deer's feet, the deer is called the king of the mountain. His feet is specially powered to be able to climb mountains. It is touted that the white-tailed deer can jump four to five meters a leap. Just one leap. To give an idea of what five meters, what four meters is this? That door is three meters. Add one more to it, it's four meters, then five meters. Twelve to fifteen feet. Just one leap. So when God says, he will be my strength, he will make my feet like the hind's feet. That's the picture he's painting. Where you can leap over the mountains. Leap over the challenges of life. Leap over the responsibilities of life. Hallelujah. That's what the deer is. The king of the mountain. And that feet is specially designed to climb high, high places. <laughs> Glory to God. Where humans struggle, the deer moves with ease. And he's sometimes called the king of the mountain. Shout hallelujah. Hebrew, Habakkuk 3.19, look at the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. If you look properly in your Bible, there's an annotation over that sure-footed. It gives me the speed of a deer. May the Lord give you the speed of a deer to be able to tread upon the heights in the name of Jesus. So when he says the Lord is my strength, he makes me or gives me the speed of a deer. What you need for divine speed is the strength of the Lord. You need him to strengthen you. When he strengthens your feet and makes you and designs you and designs your feet like that of the deer, then you are able to leap over whatever obstacles that may be in your way. In the name of Jesus. I pray over you this morning that you receive strength from the Lord. I say receive strength from the Lord to make and configure your feet like that of the deer. In the name of Jesus. What you need is divine speed to make spiritual progress. Go back to Amplified Classic of verse 19. What you need is divine speed to make spiritual progress. The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, my invincible army. He makes my feet like the hind's feet, like the deer's feet, and will make me to walk. Not to stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. And then, when you make that leap, what happens? And you scale trouble, afflictions, 
suffering and responsibility, you learn into increase, abundance, and luxury. May that be your portion. I prophesy abundance over your life. I prophesy abundance over your life. I prophesy increase over your life. I prophesy luxury over your life. In the name of Jesus. God is not a God that is against luxury. We read in Deuteronomy 32. Yogurt, fatness of the ram, the finest of wheat is all yours. God should not be equated with poverty. He should not be equated with suffering. But there is a pathway to it. And it's that pathway we must locate. And it's that pathway we are teaching you. Shout hallelujah. God is not against luxury. No. Say, this luxurious life is too much. No. When you have more than enough, you have more than enough to be a blessing to the nations and you yourself will be blessed. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have a bigger amen? amen? Can I have a believing amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, like we said earlier, the high places is a metaphor for two things. A place of trouble, suffering, and responsibility. And also a place of increase, abundance, and luxury. This principle is anchored in the word of God. Just like Benjamin must first be called Benoni, the son of sorrow, before becoming Benjamin, the son of my right hand. So also God has destined for you and I that we must go through sorrow, suffering, and responsibility at times, and many times, so that we can leap into our right hand of increase, abundance, and luxury. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Genesis 35, just give me verse 18. Verse 18. Let me anchor that in scripture for you. And as her soul was departing, for she died, she called his name Ben-Oni, the son of my sorrow. But his father called him Benjamin, the son of the right hand. Hallelujah. To become the son of the right hand that God has destined us to be, we need strength. The strength of the Lord for speed to overcome our present sorrows, our troubles, and our responsibilities. So that we can transition to becoming the sons of the right hand. Where there is increase, abundance, and there's luxury. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. May that be your portion. I said, receive strength to overcome your sorrows. Receive strength to overcome the troubles afflicting you. Receive strength to be able to bear the responsibilities on your shoulders in the name of Jesus. And receive strength in your feet to make it like the hen's feet so that you can step into abundance in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, can I have a powerful amen? If you believe this recurrent growth will be powered by the strength of the Lord to produce divine speed, can I have an amen? amen? Let's rise up on our feet this morning. We'll continue next week Sunday. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What you need is strength. Somebody says, Pastor, you don't know the responsibilities I'm bearing. Come and ask me. I'm also bearing responsibilities. But God will design your feet. Lift up your voice and call for strength. And ask for the strength of the Lord. Lord, strengthen me and make my feet. Habakkuk 3, 19, leave it on the screen. Make my feet like the deer's feet. Strengthen me, you are my strength. Make my feet like the deer's feet. Strengthen me so that I can gain your divine speed to overcome the high place of trouble, the high place of affliction, the high place of responsibility, the high place of suffering, so that I can overcome and transit into the high place of increase, the high place of abundance, the high place of luxury. That is where you want for me. That is your plan for me. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Send shikataya. La raba baba zeboro ba zegataria masekataya leria masom bakaro ba zegataya. We receive strength from above, Lord. Father, we receive strength from above. We receive strength from above in the name of Jesus. 
Mezandoro pasikataya pako shekataya. Rako pasikataya baba sekata. Mezanda rabako shekataya. La rababa baziboro bazikata ria masikataya. Mezandora pako zebara paka zekataya. Rake poso para baba basekata. We receive strength, O God. Make our feet like the hands feet. So that we be able to overcome. So that we can make progress. We can gain speed to overcome the high places of affliction. The high places of responsibility. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I can't feel you. I cannot feel you. Lift up your voice to him. He's the supplier of strength. The Lord God is my strength. My personal bravery. My invincible army. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One key is your actions, your positive actions that you need to make. Another key is the key of speed, divine speed, divine speed, divine speed. Father, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We cannot help ourselves. We trust you to help us. Thank you, Father. Help us to enjoy this recurrent growth where our previous customers are coming back and all men and women that have visited us randomly in the past. Yes, they will be divinely prepared to come back again, to return and to run back again and again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All has bowed and all eyes closed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are here this morning. You have heard the words of life. And you want to say yes to Jesus. Lord, help me. Bring me back into alignment. I know I've backslidden from you. But Lord, bring me back. You want to say yes to Jesus. You want to say yes, Lord. Be my Lord and be my master. If you are here this morning, just raise up your right hand to God. You want to say yes to him. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Raise up your right hand wherever you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Thank you, Lord. And perhaps there is no one here to freshly give their lives to Jesus. But you are saying, Lord, bring me back into alignment. Just place your hand upon your chest. You are saying, Lord, bring me back to my first love. Help me. I want to pray for everyone. Who is yearning and saying, Lord, bring me back to my first love to the place where I first believed, where your zeal consumed me more than anything else. Father, you know your people that are saying and yearning in their hearts, bring me back to my place of first love. Fill up the void in my heart. I ask that you meet them at the point of that need in the name of Jesus. Pour out your abundance of grace over them. Visit them in a special and a new and a unique way multiply your strength unto them. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. In Jesus' name we have prayed.